Welcome back. And in this lesson, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about some security options on our virtual private cloud. Now, I want to go over just a quick diagram provided by Amazon Web Services. And I want to talk about a few concepts, even troubleshooting type items when it comes to security in our virtual private cloud. So security in our virtual private cloud, we have two different layers of security. We have our network access control lists. So for you network administrators out there, that probably sounds a little familiar. And then we have our security group that sits in front of our EC2 instances or our RDS instances. So we can manage security at the security group level. But then we also have essentially a firewall at our network level, also known as our network ACL. And so that's this option right here. So let's talk about the process in this before we take a look at those network ACL rules and how they work. So this diagram allows us to illustrate that we have one, a virtual private gateway or an internet gateway. And as we know, we know that our gateways allow us to send and receive traffic. Whether our virtual private gateway connects our on-premise or branch location and extends our cloud to internal networking to, for example, our home computer or office computer. But then we also have our internet gateway, which allows traffic from the internet, open internet, to come into our virtual private cloud if we assign elastic IP addresses, two instances or elastic load balancers, or it has a public IP address associated to an instance. Because again, we know that in order for an instance to be able to communicate, even if it has an internet gateway, it needs to have an elastic IP address associated with it or an elastic load balancer in front of it. So some way a public DNS and those two options handle public DNS. So let's take a look at this from a perspective of coming from an internet gateway. We have traffic that comes through the internet gateway it hits our VPC router. From there, it one where which subnet's going to go to. So let's say our 10.0.0.0 is our public subnet. Okay, so from there it's whichever subnet it goes to, which really it looks at what instance we're directing traffic to. So is our elastic load balancer serving traffic to our 10.0.0.0 subnet? Or do we have elastic IP addresses assigned to these two instances in our 10.0.0.0 subnet? So if we take a look at this traffic, we come through the internet gateway. We hit our VPC router and go through our routing table. And then we have a network ACL, and this is essentially a firewall for our subnet. We can allow or deny traffic to and from our subnet through this network ACL. So our network ACL either denies traffic here or it allows traffic to go through our subnet. From there, our traffic is still going somewhere. So we're gonna say it's going to our two instances up here. Our traffic flows through the subnet to our security group, which sits in front of our instances. Our security group, as we know, has rules sitting in front of it. It's essentially a firewall as well. It's a firewall for our instances. We can allow and deny traffic. We can allow and deny traffic based off IP addresses. So this is another layer of security. And then we have our instances, which allows if all of the traffic is allowed to go through our network ACL, through our security group, and finally to our instance. So here we have two layers of security for monitoring traffic in and out of our virtual private cloud or to an instance. So let's talk about a few scenarios. Let's say that there is an individual that is attempting to DDoS our network, take down our network. And we want to not just deny him access to a specific instance, because again, we can deny access on the security group level. But we want to, instead of having to alter every single security group we have, we want to just make sure that he is not allowed or we want to make sure that that DDoSer is not allowed to even get past or to our network subnets. So instead of having to modify as many security groups we have to block his traffic period from all of our instances, we can do that on the network ACL level for our subnets. Okay, so we can actually create a rule that says deny this specific IP address. And whenever that traffic comes in through our routing table, through our routing table, and hits our network's network ACL, if there's a deny rule for that IP address that's DDoSing you, it will go no further. It will not hit any of your instances. It will be denied on the network layer of your virtual private cloud. 
We can also add a rule in our security group that denies the traffic. But again, we would have to add the rule to every security group that we want to deny traffic to. This person is DDoSing us, so chances are we want to deny their all of their traffic from any of our network because there's nothing useful coming from that DDoS attack. So we would do that at the network ACL level. We would create a rule that says deny this IP address from sending and receiving any traffic to and from our subnet. So let's head back over to our virtual private cloud dashboard. From there, let's head down to security. We have our two options, two layers of security inside of our virtual private cloud. Our network ACLs allow us to create essentially firewall rules that deny or allow traffic at the subnet level, at the network layer. Our security groups sit in front of our EC2 instances, so traffic can still flow in and out of our subnets, but it may be denied or allowed at the EC2 level, at the RDS level, the instance level. So let's talk about our network ACL. Security groups, we've gone over in EC2 basics, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to focus on our network ACLs. At this point in time, we should already understand how security groups work. But for virtual private cloud, we need to understand how our network ACLs work. So our virtual private cloud is stateless. If we want traffic to be allowed and denied, this means that we need to create rules for outbound traffic and inbound traffic. Just because we create a rule that allows all traffic on port 80 to come in does not mean that a traffic is allowed to go out on port 80. So our return traffic must be explicitly allowed to be sent back out. This is different from our security groups. Our security groups inside of a VPC are stateful. Response return traffic is allowed to flow out regardless of allow or deny rules. So if we had inbound traffic to port 80 and our instance needed to send traffic outbound as a response, that would be allowed automatically. However, network ACLs, we have to explicitly allow or deny inbound and outbound rules. So if our, if our traffic incoming needs to send a response, we must make sure it has an outbound rule available or open in order for it to send that response or else it just won't send the response. It'll be blocked. So this is tighter layer security than our security groups. So we would probably want to block. So in our scenario, we want to block this DDoS attacker and we're going to make up an IP address from here in order to block that. So let's go ahead and select edit. Now, when we look at these rules, we need to look at these rules from a rule number. Now, it is best practice whenever we add a rule to increment it by five. Now, let's talk about why that is. Network ACLs are evaluated from the lowest rule to the highest rule. So what we have here by default on this default network ACL. Now, if we look at this, this one network ACL is associated or protects all three of the subnets we created inside of our virtual private cloud. We can create different network ACLs and assign our subnets to a different network ACL. So if we wanted two of our subnets to be under our default network ACL and we wanted to create a second custom one for our third subnet, we could do that. And inside of our subnets, we could actually specify which network ACL that we want to use. Allows us to select our available ones inside of our VPC, much like our route tables. So in our network ACL, our rules are evaluated from the lowest rule to the top rule. We want to increment the rule numbers best practice by five, because if we want to add a rule in between 100 or 105, then we still have room to do that. So let's say that we want to create an explicit deny for a specific IP address. What I would do is I would add another rule. I would set this as rule number 99. This is all traffic because I really don't want this user even seeing my network. And then the source. And again, I'm going to make up an external IP address. It's probably going to now be the proper class when we do that. I'm just going to enter in the proper format here. And we're going to say that this is the attacker's IP address. Remember, slash 32 specifies this exact IP address, the range of one. And we're going to deny this user. So all we do is add that rule and hit save. 
So let's look at what's happening at this network ACL. This network ACL is going to evaluate rule number 99 first. So when this user, this IP address hits your traffic, whenever traffic from this source hits this network ACL, which is protecting currently all three of our subnets, the first thing it's going to do is evaluate the lowest rule first. And we probably should have put that actually 95 rather than 99. But it's going to evaluate this traffic first and it's going to deny it. So this explicit deny will deny all traffic from this user. Even though we have this allow, this deny is still going to explicitly deny all traffic from this user. Now our allow rule here will allow all other users or traffic from other destinations to come into our subnet to go through our network ACL. So all of our traffic after this deny, if this, this is going to deny this IP address, but all other traffic is going to be allowed. Now, if you notice here, we have a deny at the bottom. Now inside of a network ACL, you always have your deny. And what this means is, is deny all other traffic, but it's not an explicit deny. So if we did not have our allow rule, which allows all traffic, except for our explicit deny here, in and out of our network ACL, then all traffic would be denied. So if we only wanted to allow certain IP addresses at a specific time, so for example, let's edit this, and let's say, an alteration of the IP address that we're allowing, let's say we want to allow 68.56.43.66 and select save. Let's look at what this means. First, we're going to evaluate 99 because we evaluate rules from the lowest level number, rule number, to our highest rule number. So first, if the source of the traffic is our 68.56.43.63, it's going to deny that traffic. It's not going to be able to go into our subnet. It's going to be denied at the subnet level, not the EC2 level, not the security group level. It's going to be denied on the network level. It's not even going to get inside of our network. Then it's going to look at rule number 100, which says allow only traffic from 68.56.43.66. So if you're coming from this IP address, it's going to allow that traffic. Now then our last rule, which is our just in general deny, all network ACLs have this. If you are not this IP address that is allowed, 68.56.43.66, you're going to be denied. Now what's actually going to happen here is since we are only allowing a specific IP address to come in, our source attacker, our 68.56.43.63, would actually be denied under this rule because we're only allowing traffic from this IP address. All other traffic will be denied. So it's actually going to be denied twice here. But if we edit this rule and instead say, let's allow all traffic inside of our subnet, and let's hit save, then all traffic will be allowed. Okay, we always have our deny, but since all traffic is allowed, it's not going to do anything. It's not an explicit deny. And then we have our explicit deny. So we have an explicit allow, which overrules just a basic deny. An explicit deny, which overrules any allow. An explicit deny always overrules. So we have our explicit deny. It's going to deny our attacker. It's going to allow all other traffic. Now, if we change this again to, say, SSH traffic and save it, what we're going to do is this is going to deny all traffic over all protocols to our attacker source, but it's going to allow all traffic from any source over port 22 on TCP protocol into our subnet. And it will deny all other traffic because there's no rule. So again, we have our deny there to deny all of the traffic except for what's explicitly allowed. And then we have our explicit deny to make sure that our attacker IP address does not get inside of our subnet. So if we have an attacker who is DDoSing our subnet, trying to hack our subnet or hack our network or even just an instance, we don't want that user to have any traffic coming in and out of our subnet, in and out of our network. So we're going to block them at the network level 
and we don't even have to worry about blocking him on the security group level. If we wanted to, we could. It's another layer of security, but we'd have to do that in every single security group that we wanted to protect. So if we wanted to just explicitly deny him from all traffic, all instances in our subnets, we would do that at the network ACL level. Now again, what we have to do here is we have our port 22, which is our TCP. If our TCP port 22 needs to have response data, if our instances, if our traffic needs to send response data to our inbound traffic, we need to make sure that it is allowed to be sent out here. Now by default, we have our allow here, which means all traffic is allowed to go in and out. If we were denying everything and we wanted to be able to SSH properly, SSH generally needs response traffic packets, we would do an SSH and we would allow just that. So if we look at our rule now, all traffic from all sources over protocol TCP over port 22 is allowed to be sent outbound from our network. Our network is allowed to send responses, outbound traffic. All other traffic over everything else is gonna be denied. This is our general catch-all for everything we don't explicitly configure. Our inbound rule allows traffic to come in and out. Our, in, our, our inbound rule allows traffic over port 22 to come in, but if you're this IP address, you're not gonna be allowed. All of the traffic will be allowed, but this IP address has an explicit deny. So it's gonna be evaluated first, and all other traffic will be allowed. So now we've learned how to configure stateless configuration, stateless network ACLs. We know that we have to have explicit rules for response traffic, and we know how to block attackers inside of scenarios where we need to protect our subnet, inside of scenarios where our network is being attacked from individual IP addresses. All right, so that's gonna be our lesson over network ACLs. Again, we've talked about network security groups. We talked about how those are stateful. A few things about security groups. Again, we know security groups are assigned or instances are assigned to specific security groups. We know that instances can belong to multiple security groups. We know that security groups rules are stateful, which means we don't need explicit outbound rules for response traffic. We know that we can change our security groups on our EC2 instances just by right-hand clicking, or we can change that without actually having to terminate our instance and rebuild it from an AMI, much like the EC2 classic used to require. And so that's really a high-level overview of security on our virtual private cloud. Remember, we have two layers of security. We have our network ACLs, which block it at the network level. And we have our security groups, which block it on the security group level, but really that's the instance level. If you have any questions at this time, please feel free to ask, else go ahead and complete your lesson.